guys. Let's get, we got like a little bit of wiggle, but not a lot. Let's get them out. Just wave your hands like you don't care. Because we're going to read the second chapter of the new Logan Scott book, The Wandering Wildflower. So we got to get these twists out, all these moves that we're like wanting to scooch around, ants in the pants. Because we're going to have some fun reading today, right? Chapter 2. Logan pushed open the doys, doors to the old toy store. He remembered the first time he came in here and stepped on the smiley mat in the middle of the store. Last time, the floor opened and he thought he was going to die. Thankfully, it was just a cool slide to go to the secret lab in the basement. He went over to the mat now, ready for what was coming, and jumped on the mat. Woohoo! Logan screamed as he slipped and slid down the slide. When he landed, Agent Moon was standing there with Agent Stumps. Both agents looked at Logan with exasperation. So, Logan, in order to keep a lab secret, maybe don't scream woo-hoo so loud? Agent Moon asked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Logan said sheepishly. Agent Stump started chuckling, shaking his head. Hi, Logan. You made good time, he said, walking toward the table where the special tools were. I was at the park with my friend, so I was closer, Logan replied. Your friends don't know you came here, do they? Agent Moon asked, suddenly looking worried. Nah, I made an excuse to leave. They don't suspect a thing, Logan said confidently. Okay, good. We need to keep this to as few people as possible we can. Otherwise, the whole operation will get shut down. The police can't have the public knowing that a kid is part of a secret division, Agent Moon explained. Well, Logan, we called you because, once again, we need a kid's way of looking at this case, Agent Stumps called out from the other side of the room. Okay, what do you have this time? Hopefully there aren't any spoiled brats again, Logan wondered aloud. Ha! No, Penelope Grupp is still behaving quite well. After her pun father punished her for running away, making it look like someone took her, Agent Stumps responded. Phew! Logan sighed with relief. This time we're actually looking for a flower, Agent Moon told Logan. Not just any flower either. This flower won first place in the county fair and is supposed to be getting a special award at City Hall this Saturday. Oh yeah, I heard that Miss Cindy won that award. She is our neighbor. I feed her cats Nala and Nico when she goes on vacation, Logan said. Oh, unfortunately, the flower has gone missing and is very delicate orchid. Specifically, it is the famous Lady Slipper Orchid, which is protected by Minnesota state law. A flower is protected by the law? Logan asked in disbelief. Yep, in Minnesota, it's illegal to pick one, even if you see it on the side of the road, Agent Stump stated, looking very pleased with himself for knowing that fact. Why is it protected? It's just a flower. If you pick it, do you go to jail? What happens to the flower? Does someone adopt it like kittens? Logan asked, thoroughly flabbergasted that someone could go to jail for picking a silly flower. That would be a good research project for you, Logan. However, for now, let's keep our questions to the case, Agent Moon suggested. Ugh, that's like homework. I mean, I guess I could go to the library during summer when school's out on a beautiful day like today. Logan said in a monotone way. That's a great idea, Agent Moon said in a way too happy voice. Agent Stumps was trying not to smile, but not quite succeeding. <clears throat> so, Logan, we need you to start right away, Agent Stumps said after clearing his voice. Okay, but I will have to start tomorrow because it's almost dinner time. So what kind of tools do I get? Hopefully there are rockets on my bike again. Logan said, rubbing his hands together. 
In the last case, Dr. Rackett, the tool maker, modified Logan's bike to have mini rockets on the wheels so he could go get places fast. Logan really wanted to try those out again. Yup, you will get the x-ray glasses and the invisible spray too. Plus, a few more the doc has come up with, Agent Stump said gleefully. So wait, Logan exclaimed. They all walked over to the table with the tools on it. Dr. Rackett was in there in his reflective vest and black gloves. All right, now Logan, these tools are to be used only for the finding of this missing flower, Dr. Rackett reminded Logan. I've come up with a special lollipop. Wait, if you press the little button on the hollow stick, the lollipop head blows up into a balloon, big balloon. Then a handle drops out of the stick with a button on the side of it to make the balloon start to float. Logan's eyes got huge and he started to smile. How will I get back down, he wanted to know. Dr. Rackett replied, just press the button again and it will come back down. Now, over here, I have an accessory for the lollipop. Logan looked at what seemed like a plain old shoelace. Although by now, Logan knew it would not just be a plain old shoelace. Most likely, it would be a crazy lasso or something like that. This little shoelace is more than just a shoelace, Dr. Rackett explained. <laughs> Logan smirked. Ha, huh, I knew it. It's a lasso, thought Logan. Oh, I love this one, Agent Stumps interrupted. See, if you pull on both ends, it unravels into a rock climbing harness. It is good for attaching another person or thing to you. Or in my case, it fits cans of pop around your waist perfectly. Then you don't have to get up when you're watching football, except to go to the bathroom. Everyone in the small room was now staring at Agent Stumps. Agent Moon was making a face that looked like Logan's mom when she was listening to Logan try to get out of a chore. One eyebrow was up, the other was down. He kind of felt bad for what was coming next for Agent Stumps. Oh, really, Agent? And how do you know this little tidbit of information? Agent Moon inquired. Um, well, you see, it was like this, Agent Stumps stammered. We will discuss your reasons after we are done here, Agent Moon interrupted. Okay, Dr. Rackett, that's great. Thanks again. Wait, Dr. Rackett exclaimed. I almost forgot to give you the essential part of this tool. As he said this, he held up what looked like a claspy thing. Logan's dad called a carabiner. This is to be hooked on the pant loops of you and whoever or whatever you need to float with you. When you use the lollipop tool, Dr. Rackett finished. How would I connect it to something that didn't have a loop? Logan asked. Excellent question. You really got a good one here, the doctor said, looking at Agent Moon. When you unclip it, you see that one end is pointed. That is used to poke a hole in something, and then you can attach it to the carabiner. Ha, Logan thought. He knew that's what it was, of course, without the sharp end. On that note, Agent Stumps came over with Logan's special gloves. These will protect your hands. The good old doctor added some extra grip for the balloon handle. All right, cool. I'll call you when I find it, Logan said as he hopped on his bike, waiting for the secret hatch leading outside to open. Remember, before Saturday, called out Agent Moon to Logan, who rode off with a thumbs up. And that is chapter two. Next week, chapter three is beginning of the search. Thanks for coming and have a fan.